Hello, this is Brian Houle. I am a solutions consultant with Beyond 20, and I'm here to look at ways to partition, and I use that word lightly, your ShareWell instance uh, to support multiple business units. And what I mean by that is, say I have an HR department, an IT department, and maybe a, a facilities group that all want to use a single instance of ShareWell service management, but they don't want to see each other's tickets, data, they want to keep everything separate. You can do quite a bit of that separation with uh, out-of-the-box functionality. And I'm going to go through a couple of ways to do that, a couple of steps to take. So I'm going to start in the administrator tool, and I'm in the 5 series of ShareWell here. The first thing to look at is your security category. So I'll go in here and I'm going to edit my security groups. Now, uh, what I've done is created a couple of template security groups. The reason for this is I'm going to um, create a security group for each of my business units and I'm going to have a template for uh, portal users and for smart client or desktop client users. Uh, they'll have different packages of permissions and that's why I split them out. The reason I template them is that I can sort of maintain these templates and then copy them out when I need to create new uh, business units. So here let's look at our business objects tab and what I'm doing is I'm limiting my business objects uh, according to the role of the current user. So what I'm actually doing is I have my template so I click on the roles tab and in my portal template I have portal facilities and what I want to do is have uh, in most cases exactly one role for each security group so that um, you know when I, I would create a copy of this template call it portal uh, facilities and then portal facilities would be the exact single role for that security group. And that sort of drives all of the magic here is that I am looking at this role, whether I'm in the portal or I am in the smart client, when I'm trying to limit or constrain access to certain business objects. And to do that, I'm going into my business objects and let's look at, oh, say, incident, because everybody loves incident. Now, incident is already out of the box, sort of constrained by owner. So what I'm doing is, um, on any of these business objects, I'm looking at this limit records by based on criteria. So I can click Browse, and here what I'm looking at is this company field. Now, I'm importing from AD the business unit, which is stored in this company field. So this would be facilities or HR or IT, or if you have uh, subsidiary companies, however you want to do it. Um, but this is basically how I'm matching business unit to customer uh, or user. So I look at the company and I make sure that it's equal to the portal role name. And I'm doing a little, I have an expression here where I'm actually uh, doing a little modifier on that. So I'm looking at business, uh, business unit for portal role name. I'm going to edit that. And what I'm actually doing is taking the current role name of the current user and I'm doing a little text after. So as you noticed in the role name I had portal and that's just a naming convention so that I can keep track of uh, you know the what type of uh, user it is and so I can also capture my role name. So anything after the word portal in my role name is going to be my business unit name. And so I click out of there, and as you can see, if I go back to my roles, facilities is after portal. So that's how it's going to match it. And it's a real simple way to just say, who is this user and what should they see? Um, so again, let's look at maybe, oh, let's say problem. And again, we're looking at portal users, and problem's usually pretty restricted for, there it is, for portal users. But again, limit records based on criteria. Everything is driven by this. So if I click browse, our stored query is a little bit more complex. We have a few more clauses in it because I'm looking at uh, if it's visible to the portal or if it's a known error in the portal, that sort of problem stuff. But for my purposes, what I'm looking at are two, two new things. Um, 
I'm doing a related clause to look at business units on problem. The reason I'm doing this is because there may be particular problem records that I want to expose on a record by record basis. So in other words, there may be um, certain uh, business objects like change that I will drive that at a business object level, right? Um, the owner or the customer ha business unit has to equal the current user's business unit in order to uh, see that business object. But for problems, I might want to say, well, problem, you know, 10,010 is kind of broadly applicable to all business units. So here, this expression allows me to say, if there are no business units on this relationship, then show it to everybody. But if there is at least one and um, the business unit selected equals my current portal role name, then I will see that. So you see how that happens? So if there are no business units, it's assumed that everybody can see it. But if there is at least one, that one has to equal mine or I can't see it. So let's take a look at what that looks like in the client, uh, the blue pill. Here we are in the blue pill and I've got a blank problem open. And what I've done is I've added a relationship to a business units table, and that is just a table uh, listing my business units, my valid business units. And this tab is kind of descriptive, so it's visible in portal to these business units. So that I know that when I apply a business unit to this problem, it's going to be uh, indicating that it's visible, but only in the portal. The smart client security group will handle uh, visibility and uh, for other business units. So in other words, if facilities has their own people who work tickets, technicians, then they will be logging into the smart client and then they will be able to see problems according to their, the business object rather than individual records. So I can link a uh, business unit to this problem, this record 10342, and that will uh, say, that will allow people from whichever business unit I select to view it in the portal if it, it is viewable in the portal at all. So let's set a priority and then let's go ahead and link it. So we'll say that this is visible to, um, oh, well, let's say facilities and there it's added and I can say also, well, this is visible, it's applicable to IT. So now what's happened is I've created a relationship uh, between this problem and these two business units in this table. And now I can write expressions that checks for them, uh, that looks for business unit name equals um, my current role name. And that is a way to sort these. So when I get into the portal, I will only see those business units um, that, uh, I will, if I'm, I will only see those problems that are visible to my business units. If I take these all away, then in this, in this method, the uh, default assumption is that no business units are selected. Problem is available is visible to all business units. So there you have it. In this video, I looked at ways to limit the records that a security group, a user assigned to a security group, can access, and we also looked at a method to limit individual records uh, for a given business object to a particular business unit by matching a business unit string to my current role name. And I can look at that in the portal and the smart client universally. In the next video, I will look at uh, how you can limit a service catalog in the portal and in the smart client uh, based on business unit. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to our channel for more shareable videos. Thanks.